Hey everyone, it's EJ from iDesign.com. Uh, today I'm going to be showing a little bit about uh, the in inheritance effector. Um, you can find that right here. Um, I've never, re I've just started using this and really understanding what, you know, how powerful this uh, cloner can, or this effector can be. Uh, you know, aside from the random shader, all that stuff, like, they're pretty pretty easy to figure out what they do the inheritance not so much um, and there's a there's a bunch of things that you can do that are pretty uh, that will get you some pretty uh, interesting results but right now I'm going to show you uh, how you use the inheritance effector to um, offset animation that is applied to clones so uh, I'm going to start out with uh, this uh, platonic object and uh, actually added some uh, position, scale, and rotation uh, keyframes to it. So if I play this, it just goes in a circle. Uh, I also scaled it, scaled it down, it scales back up. Um, and we want, what I want to do is clone uh, a bunch of these over an object, and I want to be able to control or trigger the animation and have control over. You know, I want I want the animation to start from left to right, or you know, whatever you want to do. Um, so first, I'm gonna start off and get a cloner object in here. Uh, drop the platonic object in there. Uh, and we're gonna clone it along a sphere, and so it uh, clones evenly. I'm gonna use an isocahedron, which uh, makes all the uh, polygon or the the uh, the polygons will clone evenly along of the way the uh, polygons are set up here evenly across the surface uh, so I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna change this to object mode drag the sphere in there you can see already our all of our platonic objects are cloned along the the faces of uh, this object so um, and when I pl press play that uh, keyframe animation does not is not working so that's where the inheritance effector comes in. So uh, let's see. I'm going to actually bring the segments down so we have uh, a little bit less objects to work with. So we can actually see what's going on. I'm going to uh, disable the visibility of that uh, sphere as well. So we're going to go in here, get the inheritance effector, um, make sure it's applied to our cloner. And still nothing. What you actually have to do is go into the inheritance um, and tell it what object you want to take the animation from, which is this object, uh, the platonic object with those keyframes. And right away, you know something, something's going on. If we press, pu press play, uh, it's animating, but it's animating as an entire group, a cloner group. And you might want that, you might not. Uh, it could actually get more interesting uh, results when you switch this to animation. And that's still not what we want. But what we have to do is uh, change the transform space instead of generator, which our generator is the cloner object. And we don't want it to be the generator. We want it to be the individual uh, platonic object. So we have to go from generator to node, which will just go to the base level animation of the object being cloned. So already you can see we have that uh, keyframe animation uh, applied to all of these clones. It's going a little bit slower than the original keyframe and why that is is you have this start and end time and so you can actually control when you want uh, the keyframed animation to start on the cloners and N. And so let's, if we bring that down to 20 frames, so it's starting at zero, ending at 20, and that's pretty fast. But you get the point. So let's change that to 30, slow that down a little bit. Let's actually bring our composition frame down. So there you go. All of our, uh, all of that keyframe animation is now applied to all those clones. Now we have uh, some other options uh, there's step gap uh, if you change that it actually it, it 
actually is pretty interesting because of the the sphere that we're having all the clones cloned to. If if I actually applied this to, and I'll actually show it real quick. If I actually applied this to um, a plane, let me switch this out real quick. So all of our all of our clones are applied there. If we go back to the step of, uh, step gap, you can see it it's uh, offsetting or delaying it like a step effector would. So, but with uh, with our sphere, for whatever reason, um, I guess the way the the uh, polygons are uh, in order. Um, there we go. Um, because we have the the sphere here, it, it just is randomized in a pretty pretty interesting way. So, uh, but another way, I mean, you really can't control how this is working. It's just based off of uh, the order the the inheritance is uh, object is affecting each. Uh, polygon face on the sphere but if you want more control you can actually go and control it by uh, a fall off object so if you go in here it's on infinite right now if we change it to linear and we move this across you can see this actually when when the the fall off object goes over the clone it actually triggers that animation you know across each clone which is pretty cool and I mean, there's so many, uh, so many possibilities for you know, an animation like this. So if we keyframe this offset, let's move down the timeline. Put another keyframe. So if we hit play, it's uh widen that a little bit and let's actually bring that in that's going a little bit too too fast there we go okay so let's press play that's looking all right if we uh if we up the size of this of the uh up the size of the transition you get some pretty cool uh, pretty cool movement going on to those clones if we, let's move this a little bit over there so right there we got something pretty cool going on and you can also you know add normal you know other effectors like uh, so you want to add the delay effector to this to all this uh, animation to kind of sm either smooth it out a little bit using the blend or if you add the spring you can get some cool effects where it you know, bounces at the end of the uh, animation um, you can use different uh, fall offs so you want to use uh, uh, let's see Let's use a box. Let's delete uh, the track there. Um, bring this over. Just trying to the layoff so we can actually see what we're doing. Always forget the delay effector. Always messes with uh, what you're doing in your viewport. Um, all right, back to fall off. So you can kind of see that you know just by rotating. You know, if you animate the rotation, uh, you can get some pretty interesting animation going on as well. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, this is a pretty powerful thing the and like I said the inheritance effector can be used uh, a whole bunch of ways there's you know the morph uh, motion uh, setting as well I think uh, morph motion object 
uh, which I can show in another tutorial eventually because it's it, it, there's just so many uh, possibilities of what you can do but uh, there's a few times where I mean you if you if you wanted to offset animation uh, the only way you could really do it was using the step effector and uh, messing around with the uh, the time offset and even that it would only do it linearly like I showed with that uh, plane object so using the inheritance effector you get much more control over what order or what kind of what fashion you want your animation to start and end and what kind of you know pattern whether linearly or uh, randomly stuff like that so I uh, hope you learned a little bit about the inheritance effector and it's not so intimidating going and using it um, and I'm going to try to research a little bit more I know there's ways that because uh, that w with just with the inherent uh, inheritance effector you can only transform position scale and rotation but I think there is I've read there's an espresso uh, some way you can espresso your way into uh, you know if it had if you were using you a bend effector and there is other options other than position and like strength and stuff like that you can actually uh, get that uh, uh, in that animation as well but uh, and I'll look I'll look into that and maybe add that into another tutorial uh, along the way but um, uh, thanks for watching